हेलो 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 हैप्पी इंडिपेंडेंस डे बिलेटेड हैप्पी इंडिपेंडेंस डे वेलकम बैक टू द प्रोडक्ट एंड डिजाइन सीरीज होस्टेड बाय डिजाइन जंगल एंड डिजाइन संडेज इफ इफ यू आर हियर फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम लेट मी टेल यू अबाउट डिजाइन जंगल एंड डिजाइन संडेज डिजाइन जंगल इज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट डिजाइन कम्युनिटीज इन इंडिया विद ओवर फाइव थाउजेंड मेंबर्स and like you know we started this uh, when like you know we were the pioneer pioneers i think like you know in this category and we started this to impart the design knowledge and design jungle we uh, like you know design sundays we recently started like you know have 500 plus members thank you guys like you know we just crossed 500 members yesterday in this product design series let me let me tell you about a little bit about the product design series in this product design series uh, we are bringing some of our closest friends some of the best people in the industry who have been working in the industry for uh, let's say let, like 5 10 years and have been so much experience working on like you know a variety of products today we have with us charu she is a product designer at microsoft and she 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 is one of uh, our very good friends earlier uh, she was at zomato worked on some of the coolest products you know zomato order app zomato app as well as zomato gold so so happy to have her here like you know I, like you know we have been um, talking about doing this session for last some time like a, a few weeks now and she has put a great session for you guys i'm, I'm we just did a dry run today morning and we saw we were like okay this this is mind blowing stuff and i hope like you know you guys will find this like you know you guys you guys will experience the same oh i can totally see we are 40 four plus people right now okay so uh, and more people will be joining soon so um so just to give you a little bit context about what will uh, what she'll be taking us through today in this session she'll be taking us through how to use stories and like you know how to craft those stories into products she'll be taking two perspectives from a user's perspective and the internal stakeholders perspective and she'll be taking us through the journey so without further ado yeah 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 people are saying when when it's starting okay so um cool um so let me invite charu with us here Charu, I'm adding you to the stream. Hey, Charu, how are you? Hey, hi. I'm good. How are you? Hi, everyone. I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. So, uh, I I leave uh, the like you know stage to you. Like you know, have fun. Great. Um, thank you so much, Shohan, and thank you, Jagriti, for inviting me and letting me share. at my so hero and mention today i want to talk about uh, something uh, a skill which is highly underrated and something we all possess but we don't talk about it that often that is called storytelling and i want to look at it from a product lens and i want to emphasize on how we can use uh, stories to build great products for ourselves um before i get into that let me introduce myself to you um although rohan already did but let me just take few minutes um so i'm currently a micro uh, a product designer uh, working at microsoft here i work on microsoft office app and i have been working on it since the day we started building it um other than that i've been fortunate to work on some more projects and some more products and these are a few products and screens which i worked on or my work has touched in some ways before this i was at zomato and i was uh, very fortunate to get to work on uh, pretty cool projects and i worked on the first was version of zomato gold uh, a lot of projects around the consumer apps of zomato and zomato order and i had immense amount of learning while i was there so uh, while i was at zomato uh, the kind of work uh, culture was quite different for what from what i am doing today um the way design works at, at a startup is pretty different the way it works is very one directional um all the team is co-located and the decision making is much quicker 
uh, we have uh, uh, we have a lot of power to push uh, push the concepts we have to the product and get early feedback from users and there are comparatively limited stakeholders so when i decided to move to a large organization like microsoft i was told that it will be very different but i thought to myself how how different could it be um what could be new so i i still thought of making that move but when i joined microsoft i realized that uh, there are much more uh, uh, complex uh, parts in the puzzle here uh, the projects are highly interdependent i work with a lot of teams apart from engineering uh, pm and um, uh, research i work on a lot of various uh, various teams which which uh, sometimes are your partner design teams sometimes sometimes it's your centralized uh, design system teams and as i said projects are uh, highly interdependent so you cannot uh, you have to go through a lot of approvals to kind of push your ideas directly to uh, to customers and then uh, getting feedback is a bit slower as compared to a startup but um, when i i moved there and i thought that um it, that's okay i'll i'll somehow figure it out and uh, i still went on and uh, i i worked on things the way i was doing before and one of the days i was asked um, that charu have been here for a few months why don't you present your work to leadership which is like a set of stakeholders which are kind of your final approvers on the things you've been doing so i i thought that it, this this is my golden moment let me prepare the best um, uh, you know presentation i i mapped out all the user scenarios and all edge cases i could cover and uh, i i put together uh, tons of details in in the in the presentation i left no stones unturned and on the day of the presentation i opened my sketch file and this is what my presentation looked like i had just tons of artboard put together and i was uh, uh, explaining and i kept on blabbering about all the user uh, flows all the kind of tiny details and uh, i mean as you can see it became too much for the audience and i didn't realize um the after the presentation i i understood that it didn't go so well i was not able to communicate my concept well enough um uh, and i realized that the uh, the audience was still hung up on the problem part they were not even sure if this is the problem which is good enough to be solved so um i realized that there are a few loopholes but later on one of my colleagues um I, the friendly colleague he came to me and he told me that like charu do i have some friendly criticism or advice for you and he said that i cannot believe you showed that presentation and uh, it it was pretty harsh for me to to uh, listen to that but today i am pretty thankful to that guy because that made me think and look back and see what is the problem why was i not able to communicate what i was trying to communicate and i kept on thinking more about it so after a few days i uh, came across this quote and uh, this is from a gentleman who has also written the book called hard things about hard things and he's a tech investor um what he's saying is pretty interesting which is um, when you uh, i mean a lot of people a lot of companies can have great products but what will uh, make you stand apart from them is uh, the story which you have and um a lot of times we are asked we we are thrown this question there are these questions thrown to us that uh, why are you building this why are you solving this problem uh, why do you think it is worth it why should we invest our time in it and most of the times the answer to these questions are hidden in your product story and from this moment onwards i have started and i've tried i have like started identifying these great stories around me every day and i kind of keep a note of these stories and i i try to get inspired from them and somehow use it in on, on, for my own work 
so let me illustrate this with an example to you um if you look at this still uh, what do you think like this lady what is the app she is using on her phone she seems to be i think hi charu <laughs> jagrit is this right so it seems that she is actually maybe just um, talking to a friend and expressing displeasure over something like you know you know what you can't believe what she said or you know what you can't believe what he said so it looks like it looks something like that right um that's actually great because i right. I, I, i didn't yeah charu uh, like you know i think she is she just scolding like you know her kids um you know like you know why did you do that like you know if you were here i'll just slap you and put you down something mm-hmm. like that right <laughs> that's actually uh, amazing that your imagination is going so wild i mean that's the power of this image like i didn't even tell you any background about it but you're able to cook up these stories on your own and you're able to connect it together so yeah uh, keeping that aside uh, she's she's looking at whatsapp and this is a still from a whatsapp advertisement which i came across a few days back and i i found it to be a great example of a story of a product story especially um because the way they have shown the features they have shown are pretty basic they are just video calling and chat but uh, the way they have shown it in being getting infused with our day to day lives of you know indian middle class families uh, you can easily connect to it and you don't even realize it's an advertisement about uh, about an app so i found that to be pretty awesome but let me let me tell you why i am i'm calling it a great story so i i uh, have this uh, got to know about this framework from donna licho about a uh, great story so she has a pretty nice framework of identifying and designing great product stories and this story somehow aligns with all those uh, all the phases so let me tell you what happens in this ad so this lady here the uh, in the initial moments of this ad uh, she uh, from the background and from the setting you could you could guess that it's a indian middle class family uh, so this is the point where you have this hero's introduction in the in the story um she looks at the mirror and she's thinking to herself oh it's just a pretty boring day and things are getting pretty boring in monday so she thinks of uh, getting a bit more adventurous and she does something to her hair and she makes it look shorter and that's the point where the hero takes the call to adventure where she thinks of sending that picture to her sister she opens whatsapp and she sends the picture to her sister through it now there is a moment here where where the mentor enters this story uh, the lady is like really confused she's thinking that maybe i've not done right maybe it's too much i shouldn't cut my hair but the mentor enters the story and she says that i'll guide you and i'll help you cut your hair and uh, uh, she she said like just stay on the video call with me and then the lady somehow gathers this all this courage and she takes the a uh, scissor and she cuts the first strand of her hair and that's probably the climax of this story where it's the highest point of action and eventually she continues cutting her hair and uh, there's a moment of rebirth in the story where she feels so empowered and confident after cutting her hair shorter and uh, then there is this movement continues and gradually there is a smooth closure uh where there is this uh, tag language comes up that um, the courage you need is between you and then the story is uh, kind of taken to a smooth closure so i found this to be a great example of uh, a, pro- a product story so you you might say that it's a marketing kind of story but i think that it's there is a lot to learn from this these kind of stories for product designers like us um although then when you talk about stories in a product i think there are a good balance between your uh, left brain and your right brain uh, you have to be informative and logical and at the same time you have to uh, keep in mind the emotions and the empathy towards your users so you have to find that uh, find balance between both 
and that's how you can craft a good story for your product now uh, one of the ways how we use stories how i use stories and uh, in microsoft we use stories is we have created this uh, strong story driven design process so uh, what we do here is uh, we do not start uh, our our work or uh, creating any product just uh, with a prd or with a list of features we start by creating a vision story and what a vision story means is uh, is like we we go all out we don't think about uh, engineering uh, uh, limitations or deadlines we we think about what is our ideal user and what is the ideal scenario and the problem and the kind of solution which is which is highly ideal and then um, this helps in two ways firstly this helps in building a mind share among our teams because if everybody is on board with that long term goal it's easier to make the mvp and secondly it helps in uh, in uh, carving the mvp from that long term goal so this has helped us create a lot of great experiences and create uh, a lot of uh, products today and uh, recently i came across this uh, story from airbnb i was listening to one of the podcasts where i heard where um, brian chasky who is the ceo of airbnb he was talking about how they use storytelling uh, uh, for for creating their experiences and he talks about this uh, experience of a perfect trip where what they did was they were trying to figure out what a perfect trip would look like and what airbnb we can do there so they um, they hired a team of uh, pixar uh, storyboard artists and writers and and they asked them to write the script of a perfect trip then they uh, reached out to a traveler and they said that like we will we'll design the perfect trip for you and we'll just follow you in your trip and uh, they agreed and after the customer comes back uh, they got a mind blowing experience and uh, then they took that story they broke it down to smaller story boats and eventually that that is known as airbnb trips so so uh, something like this such a great experience actually started from a written story which is so strong and uh, this is what i mean by creating a story driven uh, process so the next thing which uh, in which you can inculcate stories in your product is um, by thinking of your user flows as small stories micro stories so often the times it happens that uh, we think of designing user flows end to end and uh, if this happens then this will happen if this happens then this will happen but um, there are a few products which look at it from a different perspective they think of designing it as uh, uh, micro stories and um it is more than just a, a simple workflow it's it's it helps them grabbing attention of the users um as well as keeping them engaged with the product so uh, we also try to do that for our own apps in microsoft uh, but one of the great examples i came across yesterday um was when i decided to make a transaction on google pay and i found it to be a pretty good like pretty good example of storytelling in products because uh, what happened was i just wanted to transfer some money and i just wanted to get done with it quickly so i opened my phone and i saw the screen i wanted to transfer some money to my brother his name showed up here i i tapped on it i decided to uh, tap on pay and this is the time when i took that call to action um then i inserted like how much amount i want to transfer surprisingly it asked me what do you want to transfer it for and i said laddus and uh, Uh, there was a moment of reward there like while i was i wanted to get done with it quickly i uh, saw that they were introduced this kind of themes which i found to be so um, interesting and i could not help for and play around with it and just tap on it and see all the themes um, and this was a moment of reward or like a surprise in this whole workflow but i still moved on and i made the payment and what happened once after my payment was done was uh, there was a moment of closure in the story where um, 
uh, they kind of like closed it smoothly with a subtle message. So since yesterday was uh, Independence Day, so they had these three kids who were talking about, who were like just waving. And it, it felt so amazing to me. And I felt so connected with this whole experience. Like after, after they closed the app, it stayed with me for a while. And I think that is the power of uh, creating more than just user flows or workflows. Um, rather think about it as uh, as you're creating a story in your in your in your interaction with the users. I think uh, this is something which which could uh, benefit a lot of products, uh, especially the products which you use on a regular day to day basis. And lastly, I want to talk about how do you build narratives for your stakeholders and um, there is no one way which works for all because whatever you are talking about whatever you're presenting it's going to be very different um, but as i showed uh, in the beginning of the presentation it's important to do the work but it's equally important to be able to create a narrative and to sell it and uh, what i personally do i can share that with you um, so Oftentimes, these end-to-end -end stories of, uh, as I showed, the entire journey of a hero, that might not work for you. And what will work is uh, maybe you have to just intelligently pick a few moments in your story and highlight those. And instead of covering everything and diluting the message. So I would say focus on the moments that matters the most. And um, the way you can, uh, you can do and you can decide what are your moments that matter um, is by looking at it in four ways. So one is think about the audience. Uh, so a lot of time the audiences are very different. Like sometimes you're showing it to the product manager. Sometimes you're saying, showing it to a pretty senior leadership in your uh, company. And uh, the attention span they will have will be way different. And the time they want to give to you it will be way different. So sometimes the same story won't work. In fact, most of the times the same narrative doesn't work. And you need to build different narratives, which is catered to these different sections of audiences. Um, secondly, uh, the, think about the context. Like, where uh, are you sharing this? Are they looking at it for the first time? Uh, and you can then uh, decide that, do you want to show some data? Do you want to show market research? Or do you want to show like a before and after of your experience? But that will help you in in uh, like uh, picking what is the right thing to show. Uh, also think about if you're sending it online or, or if it's offline. Um, then think about the takeaway, which is like, what is that one thing you want them to go, go back with? Um, it, it could be simply something like, uh, a message like you're making progress or it it could be even a message about like a concept a versus concept b and concept b is better and you can show why so you could do things like that and lastly i'll say keep refining your story so uh, when you're building a narrative about your work it doesn't end uh, just in one go uh, you need to keep refining it as you show it to people you might get some feedback continue to refine it and it will help you to get to a place where you will feel very confident about what you've developed. And I think that is the moment when you should start uh, to socialize it a lot. Um, why this is important is because we have such less uh, attention span, uh, especially when we are looking at others' work, we don't tend to like pay so much attention. Um, so especially in an organization which is bigger, you need to socialize your story a lot. You need to kind of continuously put it out there so that the message you want to send out sticks with people. And if possible, you should also put out your store product story for the end users and the customers to look at. So even they can uh, be introduced to your message. And I, I want to summarize by saying this, that uh, these are the three ways I think I, I have just touched on uh, in which you can use great stories. One is you can uh, create a story de driven design process, which will help you be more humanized. Um, secondly, create, uh, 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 create a kind of uh, uh, environment where, uh, where you have, uh, you can, you can build narratives around your stories. And thirdly, uh, create, don't create user flows, but create, these kind of experiences where 
you are telling more than just uh, i mean you are telling a story to your users and these are more engaging experiences and um, yeah i want to end by saying that a uh, great story is like a great design um, as we all know like our designs are invisible and they are, they are simple similarly stories are also um, invisible and they they are simple but they have a message which you can go back with which sticks with you and uh, if you are a great storyteller then you are a great designer so work on that skill um, that is my recommendation these are some of the references which i used while i was talking and while i was doing going through this presentation but um, that's all i had so over to uh, rohan and jagriti hi charu so this was amazing uh, first of all thank you so much who all have joined us and uh, charu this was an amazing session and i think we've already started getting a lot of questions uh, just to start with i have one question of my own so uh, you talked about how you know when you were presenting at that time there were a lot of like you know presentation boards so if i have to ask that now if you were to give advice to like you know charu from 3 years earlier what would you have done different in terms of presentation also like how would you have presented it now that you had all these ideas what would you have done differently sure um i think uh, so firstly as i said that i i would like to first think about the audience and the context so when earlier i was doing it i didn't think about it i just rushed to the software as we all do and just started creating the concepts because i think that's of course the most exciting part of our yeah. job right but uh, now i will go back and I'll, as i said like at that time um, the team was not sure if this is the problem which is big enough and we should look at and we should be so serious about solving it so i will look at and i'll try to emphasize on why is this such a big problem maybe i'll use data uh, to like back up it i would even uh, use like a, a chart of i mean like a prototype or like a video of the current flow and i'll show that how painful is it for the users i i can even record videos if possible so i'll try to use all these things and i'll yeah. then i will put together and jump to a solution rather than i mean that's like maybe what i i think i could do but yeah awesome so uh, you know we have because storytelling is such a like it's it's some there are some people who know about it but there are some which like you know some there are certain terms as well where people are not very clear so let's start with that so somebody has asked that i am forgetting the name but um yeah so his name is i don't know what his name is he has written shoe pm so he's asking what is a narrative like when you say narrative what does that even mean what's what's a narrative right um so when i am talking about narrative here which is i have talked about building a narrative for your stakeholders to pitch a story uh, pitch a pitch a idea i i think narrative is a bit old. you don't need to say it's a presentation it could be a document it could be a video it could be in any form it could be a story board so i don't think like we should limit ourselves but um what i mean to say is don't jump on the solution and don't jump on these are the you know key things just just try to create that flow of uh, why i mean take the audiences treat them as your users take them to the right through the flow or the journey of why you started from there and why you came to this point um and then yeah you cannot like go on for too long you have to be very picky and smart about uh what are the kind of movements which you're yeah. picking but that is that is what essentially i mean by a narrative um it could it be like a prototype with, i mean of your design like yeah. even that could be a narrative so anything could be a narrative yes amazing so uh something like reeti has asked what is the purpose of a storyboard so let's maybe just talk about storyboard first and then let's talk about why it's relevant and how it can be used sure so what a storyboard is like you you will also i mean you will be able to find tons of information around it but what it is essentially you look at um, the instead of looking at the product or the solution you forget all those things you look at that day of your user that like life of your user and you think about 
you know what is that person going through uh, what is it like you want to what is your context and pick a few incidents or episodes and then you play it out in some way i mean could be like just rough doodles could be even uh, excel sheet i mean could be anything right. but but you put all these things together in in like of maybe a visual format which is much better to see and you see how these how what is the chronology of all these episodes and that sometimes is much beneficial than directly jumping into designing like i want to design for onboarding or i want to design a, an awesome like um transaction experience but rather than that like maybe if you create a storyboard for your product i think mm -hmm. then you will be able to find out those gaps which you might have missed on yeah. and also it will help you you know like to create a kind of shared understanding with with your product yeah. managers with your team so i think we have found it pretty helpful right i think the best thing about what you mentioned is like to add to that the best thing is that you are starting with the fairy land like you know that's the promised land where you want to reach and sometimes like you know in design it's always about negotiation so it's like even if you're leaving something behind you still know what the like the overall vision is that's the overarching goal and then every team is working towards it in whatever ways that they could in the current constraints and you know whatever challenges there are so like that's a very good way to think of it so chalo yeah. like that's that's the story which is like what i understood was that you create like an overarching story which it which could be in terms of experience and how the product would be in the life of the user but then you know when we when we start talking about user flows we start talking about user stories or job stories so how are they different like do you do those as well like are those separate or are like they done in conjunction how does that work out right um so i think it's dependent on your own uh, company your team and what is what do you find more relevant to you but i think what we mostly use it because like a lot of times as i said like we working on this app for the first time and i most of the things i worked on is pretty much when we started building it from scratch so we had to start from that point where we were looking at the broader your fairy tale kind of story and then like once we have it we have everyone excited about it and like people are and excited to work on it and make it um, turn into reality then we try to break it down to smaller story stories and i think then uh, your user stories or your kind of like the storyboards they come into picture i think later so maybe the idea is to start with a fairy tale kind of vision story and then like take a step backwards think about then uh, these engineering constraints your your uh, uh, product priorities they all come into picture so then you can think about like maybe i want to design this particular piece first and uh, we want to build that first and then you can think about creating user stories which are like i mean this is the certain task which your user wants to do and this is how they are going to do it so that is like a smaller user story i would say so uh, actually some of the people are curious and i understand when you are uh, ignore the ghanti in the background that's why my <laughs> father doing his puja it, like it's like <laughs> how it is but <laughs> anyway <laughs> time <laughs> yeah can't help it but yeah. anyway so what i wanted to ask there are a lot of questions and i understand because these are internal user stories and maybe you can't share them but if you can just share like how does this look like like is it a video or um mm -hmm. like what is the format what is the language if if there are some examples like even in terms of how you did it and how it helped you if you can share an anecdote from your uh, real work environment even that i think would be really helpful for okay. our uh, you know audience right right yeah i think uh, so you're right uh, i mean these are internal kind of things which i cannot yeah. share out but i can talk about it so while we were like i was working on this note taking app and um, we i mean it was pretty like uh, our usual old kind of app and we wanted to redesign it completely and uh, that uh, that <laughs> so yeah so at that moment um, we were thinking like how can you innovate in this field which is like i mean it has been around no taking apps have been around forever so we we created a video like it, we called it a vision video 
and it was like your film like a like a movie like a small movie okay and it just showed that there are these few people and sound like they are maybe like they are walking on the street and they're they're taking a note like it could be a audio note or something like that so we were thinking of all these uh, we going far um, off and uh, thinking about like if we just created a small movie kind of thing and we looked at these stories but we kind of infuse our our uh, tech in it later on but we just looked at it like what do our modern what do modern people do like what do people do in their day to day life they'll travel yeah. they'll cook they'll uh, talk to their uh, friends or party or you know things like that and we created a movie out of it and then we infused um, this tech solution into it so it started with a like a small movie and then as i said like we, we like socialized it uh, sent it across to different right. teams because microsoft is a big organization so we made sure that we are getting that mind share from a lot of teams and when like they even started coming back to us with like you know this is this looks pretty promising so then it it felt like this is the correct direction and that's i think that is one of the examples where we used it um but unfortunately i cannot share it <laughs> that's why i didn't put it okay. in the presentation but yeah. yeah so that that was an amazing feedback so you know what i get from your like this story is sometimes i think even if like let's say you have created a story right and in so that's like one story that maybe you've created for your stakeholders but it can even potentially be a research tool for your users as well because that's in a way a life that you know you can show that if let's say we build this product this is how your life would look and in some ways even it can be used as a tool to validate your thing which doesn't even exist right now but maybe you know it could exist and that can be a tool to even get some feedback on that and i think that's like the moment you mentioned i thought if i like if i could i would like to validate even this story yeah. so that i know like you know what the reaction of the users are what potential users could do and that's pretty awesome so um yeah so somebody has asked that you are talking about uh, b2c apps like story building for b2c some of the examples that you mentioned so do you think it will be any different for b2b products okay i i of course i i do think that it will be different from for a b2b product because maybe in a b2b product you want to keep it very highly i mean uh, transactional in terms of like quickly you want to get things done and uh, but i don't know like i think every product is benefited by having this kind of connection uh, being able to build that kind of connection or being right. able to uh, connect with users so i think this will be advantageous for b2b product as well although i think uh, yeah uh, it's it's it definitely works in a much better way for a b2c product uh because we are ultimately dealing with uh, our uh, consumer kind of users but although i would still say that your b2b users are also users they are also humans after right at the end of the day um i yeah. think that should be helpful for that as well yeah i think what you mentioned absolutely makes sense that like you know story is a story and you're still dealing with humans like it's just that they are wearing tie and they are like in the formals perhaps but they're still humans right so i think here i will like to borrow a story that rohan shared i remember that one of his um, in one of his town halls where i was also present he shared a story of how um, the customer care executives were finding it really hard to actually help the customers when the orders were placed and were not delivered so these guys these poor people were trying their best to help but because the dashboard had some issues like they were not able to identify what's happening and i think rohan shared something where you know they went and they actually clicked pictures of how cluttered their workspace is and how difficult they find it to actually like you know look at like they are despite having an app or a software they are still using sticky notes and it's very cluttered and i think right. then they designed a solution and then they actually got like a nod from the leadership that yes we though we talk about the consumer facing app we definitely need something for our back end operations as well and i think exactly that's the point right it was a b2b setting but through pictures so i was there as an audience and even i was like wow this is so great so i think that's the power of story that 
and he used the name and he he i think he mentioned that how many hours this person is working and you know like the job is so tough they sometimes right. don't even go out to have water so if you create it like this i mean it doesn't matter right even if it's a work scenario or it's a home scenario or any other scenario it would still be impactful so uh, rohan yeah. that was a beautiful story i think this is one thing that i i like that was the biggest take away for me actually um okay so create some products uh okay we are simple hmm. okay there are a lot of learnings that people have taken so um so charu can you share some real stories of some product in microsoft that you worked or heard in your company i don't know how is that a relevant question can you share some real story of some products in ms that you worked or heard in your company maybe they want to like like know the process i don't know this is not like a very uh, this is a little vague but i would like to rephrase it perhaps it would be like let's say um, is there any product where you know you kind of started maybe it was a concept and then you took it from a story to the fruition of it like how did you do that maybe that's what he wants to learn and if you can share with okay. us yeah yeah um yeah like one of the examples i gave which is about this note taking app um, yeah. which which was exactly this we started with a vision story which we created and that was so vast like that that was so vast that for that entire uh, year we were working on the ideas we had in that vision story and that kind of um, uh, i mean ultimately it shifted as a um, note taking sticky notes uh, experience i also have been working on uh, microsoft office app um, where we again started with the kind of vision story and we thought of like hey there are all these uh, tons of microsoft apps which users have today like back hey, back one and a half year back and they have to install all these app if they have to open it on phone so we've never really thought of designing it for a mobile experience and you won't you don't want to install all these different apps you don't want to like switch right. apps and do this this makes you less productive so we looked at this entire story of what a you know a person who's who's using phone for productivity um right. so what is the day of that user looks like and we actually lay out lay it out in in a big map we did a research and we laid it out in a big uh, map of you know a day of a user and uh, from there onwards i think it started but then it eventually came down to this app which we shaped which is like a app which is combined together all these right. uh, experiences into one and we are still like refining it and making it better day by day but that is one of the examples i can i mean i can talk about that's, yeah that's amazing so charo just curious you know so you mentioned that you did all the research and then you know of course you had a day in a life sort of a story so let's say uh, do you think like uh, if let's say i do not have a research done or maybe it's a new product do you think that in that case also we can start with a story and maybe then we validate it or is it that we need to do our research first before making the story or do you think it's very fluid like how does that work at least in your context like do you do your research before crafting the yeah. stories or how does it work out yeah okay um i i think like of course you it's not possible to get a research uh, run a research um, study every time even yeah. it's not possible in microsoft and i do understand from my background is macro things work so fast you don't have the time to do a lot of research and like wait for it so i think uh, we sh- as designers should do it on our own um, as i'm saying like you have the skill so you can think of these stories and start from there if you don't have research if you have research um, then you can of course start from there if you do not then start from from the ideal story and then take it uh, i mean what you mentioned that we can also validate the stories which yeah. is created so that's also a great way of doing it but i think that is how you can kind of design what your flow will look like yeah so uh, you know many people for many of us like storytelling is something which is probably a new skill that's coming up so some like many of our uh, audience have actually asked if there's a framework that you follow so 
what's the framework okay. that you would recommend um sure actually there are a couple of frameworks for storytelling in fact like one of uh, one of the frameworks which i was uh, inspired by in this presentation was a framework by uh, donna licho and she talks a lot about she has a book on how you create amazing product stories and that helps you in building great products so i think that is something you can look at um, there is also uh, i think a session around which i mean a framework around the hero story which is more like yeah. a story uh, concept you might have heard of it's not really product but you can learn about films or right. anything like that like right. it's it's kind of a common story line which works across <laughs> all kind of you know stories you want to create so uh, yeah i think these were the few which i am inspired by absolutely so charu what i actually loved about your presentation was the storytelling has again become like a buzzword but honestly it's not that complicated right like every story as you mentioned it works across so there's always going to be a hero there's always going to be a conflict like that's what the whole uh, stress is that's what you're trying to solve and then there's going to be a mentor which solves the problem and then there's going to be a closure right because you're helping them do that so i think it's yeah. pretty standard and like that's the point that do not get like fixated with any like sometimes what happens is that we think that it's a new skill and we need to know all the frameworks to start applying but the point is yeah. to just get started and then you learn along the way right so that's amazing Absolutely. so yeah so actually for those of you who are listening we are actually conducting another storytelling session in the next week rohan will talk about it much later towards the end uh and if any one of you is interested there's another book charu has recommended some great books there's another called building story brand by donald miller it's a very nice one so i'll recommend if somebody is interested they can read that as well uh so i think um okay so okay i'm just looking at kuti looking at some questions hmm yeah so there's one thing that you mentioned charu that uh, you have to socialize uh, your designs now since i have been working in this field i know how important it is to be vocal about what you're doing but uh, maybe some of us like you know who have just joined in this may be a really new thing to do like this may be a new concept so can you talk about that because it's very very important like having conversational skills talking about your work is also equally important as at least like as important as working right so can you talk yeah. a bit about it because i think you can add a lot of value there yeah um definitely as you mentioned like as i also talked about in my my presentation right like there was a time i thought of oh, this is a space of time and i don't have time to think about the storytelling and all that and i'll just um, do the work which i'm good at so yeah but then i came to this realization that it's it's equally important to create good design but to be able to sell it so i i i think i figured out with after a few years but it will it um, it will be very helpful if you start when you are starting out keep this in mind that it's it's important to share your work and, and share it in a way that you are comfortable with um because because see everyone has a pretty limited attention span and uh, they are going to forget what you 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 shared and if it's a big organization like uh, uh, you know like microsoft or any other bigger organization um it easily gets diluted with other things and even smaller uh, startups there are tons of things going around and uh, your your kind of your concepts your your narrative can get diluted so keep it up front keep it be vocal um if you're not comfortable being vocal share it out online because nowadays we have so much uh, of you know like so many tools you can just share things online so keep it online and uh, keep sharing again and again so i really want to emphasize on that think so uh, there is a question to tell a story how do you define those who would want to hear your story and are interested in them so um like maybe it's about identifying stakeholders i'm assuming so how do you identify like so basically it's like how do you identify who are the people for whom you have to craft your stories inside your organization as well okay so um i think yeah it's important to first look at the background like 
I mean, you you'll understand the roles, right? Like if they are product managers, if they are senior leadership, if they are engineers, what what are your audience like? So one, look at the background, then think about um, what where which stage are they in? Like, are they aware of this work which you are doing? Um, is this like extremely new to them, and this is the first time you are going to talk about it? Um, is, is it like they're they're heavily involved with? So you have to. think about this and then you have to figure out like if say if they are not at all they don't know like this is even a problem in the product and uh, you would like you will just sh- start showing them you know these are the concepts so that will not work so try to take a step back and think that at this moment like maybe i should do some sort of market research and put it together like yeah. in a few slides and or or like my document and uh, put it in a concise way so people can like get a gist of it and they don't have to yeah. go through it So be smart, I think, in that way. If you have done some user research, great for that. If you if you just have created this kind of video or a small story, a board or something like that, put put that in so that they are they are bought in with your. They are they are sure that oh yeah, this looks like a big problem. If you have some nuggets from data, put that in, and then jump into your you know concept. So maybe that's a good way of forming a story. Um, right. You jump into your sketch file or your figma. Yes, amazing. And also, I think Charu, the fact that if you look at it, it's like you know the people that you're presenting it to. That time also you're narrating a story to them. So your story is being narrated through a story. So the people that you're presenting it to, they are the heroes at that time, right? So you have to cater okay. your storytelling with respect to their needs. So let's say if you're sharing it with a c level executive or somebody who is very data driven and you know that it is what yeah. will perhaps move them more than just the emotional aspect and they are the heroes right so at that time maybe you cater your story according to that so yeah like be smart about it as you said so it even that can be very contextual based on who are the people you are sharing it with makes absolute yeah. sense absolutely yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> right So Akash is asking that do you follow some product design process? Like, is there any process when you are designing a product that you use? Okay. Um. So see, I think like there is this common process which all of us use, where you start with a problem and you like you then think about the solution, you iterate, then you you give it to your users and you get early feedback. You again you keep on iterating it. So I think that's a more common workflow um then you have all these you know different kind of tools you can use like you can do some usability testing at some point of, of your concept you could you could do a storyboarding i think like these are all the other things which you can fit in your your like workflow but that is the baseline like right? that's how we all do right yeah yeah it's very contextual like you know if i have to say in the terms of story every story is different in some way like there are some ingredients which are same but at the end like every story is different so it's the same with products as well so there can't yeah. be one size fit all approach to every product that you design right exactly you you have to put your own masala to it like yes, what is that exactly special masala you want to put <laughs> to your book so so yeah exactly I think our questions are mostly done. Uh, Rohan, I think uh, let's have you. Are you there, Rohan? Yeah, he's there. Thank you so much, Charu, for your time. By the way, like this was amazing. I have taken notes myself, and this was amazing. Thank you so much, and thank you everyone who uh, came today. And over to you, Rohan. Rohan, you're mute. Thank you, Charu. Thank you so much. It was an amazing session. We got some really good comments. I've got some personal messages as well. So thank you so much for uh, doing this. Okay. Uh, so like you know, we, we we are so happy to have you here. I'm still muted. No, I'm not. No, you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So thank you so much, and uh, like you know, we look forward to having you some more. Like you know, uh, come up with some more amazing topics, and we would love to host you again. And thank you so much. So guys, how did you like the session? Oh wow! Like you know, uh, you can already see so many people saying great talk, amazing session. So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, so like you know, um, I'll just put myself in spotlight now.
Boom. So uh, if you're still here, I think you like us. You like Charu, you like me, you like Design Sundays, Design Jungle. And I, I think if you like us, and if you like to see more of us and learn more, then you, you definitely have to check out the amazing playlist, the same series that we have on the channel. And we, ha we had some amazing speakers from PayU, from like, you know, OLX, and all these people have shared some great, great, great insights. And you can use that. I, I, I actually go back and um, look at those sessions again and again. So this is how, this is the kind of value we are talking about. Also, if you like this session and learn something, we are bringing another session on storytelling in product design uh, with someone who, uh, like, you know, with someone who, like, you know, sort of uh, said, like, you know, something about like bell ringing and, like, you know, uh, so, okay, uh, she's here. So, like, you know, we're talking about Minka Chandrasekhar. She is from Property Group. group in Singapore, she's going to take us through different kinds of framework that you can use in product design to tell your stories. And we are doing this session on 30th of August. So do look out for that. Uh, so where we'll be talking a lot more about frameworks and how you can use these stories. So till then, stay home, stay safe, stay healthy. And like, you know, I look forward to seeing you on 30th. Do subscribe. Do uh, do subscribe to the channel to keep receiving the updates. Sometimes it's it's really hard to reach you guys. So thank you so much, and just stay 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 home, stay happy, stay healthy. Thank you. <laughs>